Welcome to the Market Watch. Today is Monday, April 23rd, 2018. I've got two important things to talk about, so we're going to get right into it. We'll start the charts right here. Uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is silver. Uh, we're going to get right on silver. Uh, I mean, just look at this smash. This is an epic smash happened this morning in the silver price. Uh, 37 cents down. Now, do you remember a few days ago, all these guys were out there and they were saying, this is the breakout in silver and all this stuff. Uh, this is, silver's on its way and all this stuff, all these videos and stuff they were producing about silver. I was skeptical that this is the breakout. I didn't figure it was. Uh, and I was on my channel. Uh, I said it was not. I didn't figure it was the breakout. But uh, I'll tell you what, the breakout's coming. And the breakout's going to be spectacular when it hits. Uh, the longer they hold it off, the more the breakout, the bigger the breakout's going to be. Uh, it's going to be absolutely spectacular. So don't go uh, uh, letting go of your silver at these cheap prices. They're trying to shake you out of the tree is what they're trying to do. Um, and, and they're doing it for a lot of people. They're, uh, they're shaking them out of the tree and uh, they're uh, really... And this is what they're trying to do, because this is what's keeping the silver market going, because a lot of the ones they shake out of the tree are selling real physical silver back into the market, and they're what's keeping the supply going. Uh, but that supply could dry up overnight on the stapete. Um, so now let's take a look at cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is 89.32. We're going to have to take a look at a little bit different chart, but this chart's going to give you a more overall view here it was when it was back up at 19,666. And when you see this overall view, you can see that the market has been bearish and it's still bearish even now. Even though we've had a little bit of a, a rise in price, uh, if you put it in perspective in, in this chart here, uh, going back to the, the high of 19,666, you can see a steady line downwards in price. So, <laughs> so this is just a a little up in a in a in a bear a uh, bear market. It's just a little a little bounce in a bear market, and we had an earlier bounce here uh, that took it all the way up to eleven thousand uh, from from uh, fifty nine hundred to eleven thousand, and this is another bounce that's taking it from sixty five hundred up to uh, eighty uh, eighty seven, but. Uh, Excuse me. Uh, excuse me. Uh, so anyway, what we're looking at here is is a bear market in cryptocurrency still, even though we've had this little bounce. Uh, the thing is, is I think it could go as high as ten thousand. That would put it up around Ray Road there, on that line right there, ten thousand. And then I think we're I think we're going to get a drop uh, in price, and I've been saying this for quite a little while. Uh, it's one of those things where you got to wait for it uh, because I'm going to tell you what I'm going to get to the nitty gritty right now. After we get this last bottom in price on cryptocurrency, and it puts in this final bottom, and we we might have seen the final bottom already, but I don't think so. I think there's going to be a, a lower bottom yet. After it puts in this lower bottom, bottom and it gets going up again next time, uh, probably in a year or two's time, it's going to start to really go up. Uh, you're going to see cryptocurrency go out of the price range and out of reach of the ordinary common guys like us. We aren't going to be able to afford to, but to buy a tiny, tiny little fraction anymore. And you're going to, it's going to be saddening. It's going to be the same price increase as we saw back when it was 200 bucks all the way up to 20,000. Do you remember what that price increase was like and you said to yourself, "Oh, I should have bought some when it was 200 bucks and now it's 20,000?" Well, right now, down at these prices it's at right now, it's going to do as big a climb as from $200 to 20,000. I'm serious. This stuff's going to go out of sight. And what's really going to drive it out of sight? Um, and, and also it's going to drive gold and silver out of sight at a certain point. Is we're going to be going into a hyperinflation. The U.S. dollar. 
is going to is going to die at a certain point. Now, I believe that the dollar's got one more rally in it before she dies, you know. She's got one more rally in her. But the rally is coming up soon. And then the death is coming soon thereafter. Uh it's all it's all written on the wall already this whole thing. So now let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations. Uh, what we're seeing here is $401 billion with Bitcoin dominance at 37.8%. That means that the uh, the altcoins are looking better than they ever have right now. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is really taking a really big up in price right now. I'm starting to get very impressed with EOS. EOS. I'm starting to get very impressed with that coin. Litecoin is 152 bucks and looking strong. The top coins are looking very strong. IOTA is looking strong. Uh, NEO, strong coin. Monero is a strong coin. Dash is a strong coin. Uh, I really like those top coins, you know. I like Ethereum pretty good too. It's 645 bucks. Ripple, I never did like Ripple because they're more centralized, but there you go. Okay, so uh, uh, Litecoin, 152 bucks. Yeah, that's uh, that's good, really good. Okay, so now uh, let's go on to the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We we have two big things I wanted to talk about this morning in the market report. One is uh, the Dow Jones connected connection to the bond market, and two is the silver price drop today. Those are the two big things I wanted to talk about. The two big issues. Now, the Dow Jones is up this morning 30 points, but this is very tentative. We could lose this in a heartbeat, and the reason why is I'm going to go right here and show you the reason why. I'm going to go right to bonds and rates. Uh, this is the reason why we could actually lose everything is this U.S. 10-year. I'm focusing the chart in right now so you can see. Uh, the U.S. 10-year is getting awfully high. It's getting almost up to 3%. Uh, you just see it spiking upwards and upwards and upwards. And when it crests 3%, that's the mark I've given you that it could really profoundly affect the markets. We're going to have to move to a, uh, we're on a one-year, let's try a, a one-month chart here. See? Right here, at the 4th, the 2nd, 2018, um, April 2nd, 2018, the Fed was up till that point. The Fed was cheating. They were somehow doing some sort of backdoor stimulus we didn't know about. And we still don't know what they were doing, but they were cheating. And then they quit. And they went back to their quantitative tightening on the 4th, the 2nd, 2018. And you see what the direct result was. Is the bond market started to climb again. And almost immediately it started to climb. And it's really taken off uh, now. It's shooting directly upwards, heading towards 3%. I predicted that this would happen. And uh, I'm right on the money. And I know it's going to hit 3%. And when it hits 3%, what could happen, it could fall back a little bit. When it hits 3%, because 3% is, is like people go, oh, 3%, you know, and they're, and, and they'll, uh, they'll come out of the stock market and they'll go into bonds because of yield. They're chasing yield. They, they see that 3% yield and they go, oh, 3% yield, woo. And they come in there and they, and they'll buy some. They'll buy some of that 3% yield, you know, and, uh, they might drop it back, uh, but I don't think they're going to drop it back much. Uh, I don't think they're going to drop it out of the 290s. They might drop it back to 295 or 294 or something like that. Uh, but what will that do to the stock market? Well, can we say 500-point drop? You know? And the stock market now, at this point, has been battered for a long time. Uh, what are we looking at in the stock market right now? Uh, 24,468. So we could go down into the 23s very easily if we go over 3%. Uh, and uh, we get a drop in the stock market down back down into the 23s. In uh, the overall picture of the stock market, we're going to have to go over here to, uh, let's say, a one-year chart, right? 
and that'll put us down down here to the 23s. That'll put us right in line with the with the drop, with the bear market it's been doing. If we go down to 23, you see, you see that line there. That'll put us back down here again, and that'll be that'll that'll be right in line with 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 what she's supposed to do. So so that's what it looks like to me. It looks like that this thing when it passes three percent in a few days, the bond market on the U.S. 10-year, it looks to me like it's going to drive the stock market maybe down to 23,000, which would be about a 500-point drop. Uh, and then we'll start this bouncy, bouncy recovery again. But that puts us right on line with the stock markets uh, falling off. You know, it's it's down, down, and this will be the next down. So this will be the third one. One, uh, one leg down. This is the first leg down right here. Boom, the second leg down to 23,533. Uh, boom, this will be the third leg down to 23,000. And then we'll get that little bounce again. One of these times, the fear is going to enter the market on this, and we're going to get the big down. We're going to get the big down of a 1,000-point drop, uh, or maybe more, you know, 1,500-point uh, drop or something. And then, then the people are going to start to get, they're going to start to sit up and take notice. This is a little bit more than an ordinary correction at that point. But this is if the, uh, if the Fed keeps pushing the buttons. Now, the thing is, is when we get that big drop, they might, the Fed might go back to uh, this backdoor quantitative easing uh, or, or stimulus that they're doing, some sort of uh, uh, cheating again. Uh, and this is what they might do. They might continue to do this pattern, which is giving the stock market more of a slow, uh, even though the stock market's still falling, it's giving it more of a slow, uh, a soft landing, a little bit more of a soft landing. It shows the desperacy of the Fed to stay to their to their quantitative tightening program. The fact that the stock market is 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 yielding to them, but they can't stop. At this point, they can't stop. They got to continue with it. And this is the problem: the stock market's going to continue to roll over, down lower and lower and lower. When it passes down below twenty thousand, and it will at a certain point, then all heck's going to break loose. That's the marker. Uh, Okay, so now let's take a look at oil. Oil on the five-day. We got the five-day here. I think this is the five-day. Anyway, it's declining a little bit. 67.52 is down 88 cents on the day. Uh, I think this is the one-day chart. I'm not sure. Oh, there's the one-day chart right there. Uh, this oil chart doesn't work real well for me. I, there's a five-day. Okay, that's the five-day. Let's go to the one-month. Yeah, it shows the one month. There we go. So it's up over the period of the month. Three months. Yeah, and it's up over the period of the last three months. Six months. No, it isn't going to give me six months. One year. No, it's not going to give me a year. Uh, okay, U.S. 10-year uh, Treasury. We did that, and it's going up. Uh, now, the dollar. It's the last thing today we haven't done. Uh 90.71. We're seeing a rally in the dollar. This is the first time in a long time we're seeing a rally in the dollar. Uh, and this is probably why the silver price fell back today. Right here is the rally in the dollar. There's an inverse relationship between the dollar and silver and gold prices. The dollar goes up, gold and silver goes down. And uh, we're seeing a little bit of a rally for the first time in a dollar. This is the highest the dollar's been for a long time. Uh, it's been in a range uh, between 80.5 and 89.5 and 90.5. And and it, now it's 90.72. It's almost up to 91. So it's a little bit of a rally in the dollar right now. And uh, the thing is, is what's causing this rally in the dollar is deflationary pressure. The same deflationary pressure, the quantitative tightening, has got the biggest effect on the dollar. Uh, and the oil price uh, has a negative effect on the dollar. But we can see the quantitative tightening has such a strong, profound effect on the dollar, it's negating the oil price going up. And that is very telling. The fact that the the fact that quantitative tightening is having this 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 big of an effect of withdrawing withdrawing liquidity from the system, 
they are withdrawing the liquidity from the system seriously now. Uh, there was a, a little bit of a quandary in my mind before that they that maybe they were cheating or something was going on and they were buying their own bonds. But now uh, I can see that they're sucking the liquidity out of the system. They're doing what they said they're going to do, and our crash is coming. Our crash is coming now. I can see that. Uh, it's just a matter of time. Uh, probably sometime before the end of the year. Uh, we're going to see a significantly lower stock market than we do now. Uh, probably below 20,000 somewhere. Uh, I'm predicting it can go as low as 12,000 on the Dow Jones. I'm pre that's what I'm predicting. I've been predicting it for a while now. Uh, anyway, so listen, thank you guys for listening to this issue of the Market Reports. Uh, and we'll catch you again tomorrow morning with a new market report. And uh, bye-bye for now.